Hi, everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live. If you don't know, I'm Nora O'Donnell. Yes, you are. And who are you? And I am Gail King. And who's this guy? Introduce <laughs> oh, yourself. Oh, I have to say my own Introduce name. Introduce yourself, oh, this guy. I'm John Dickerson. So we've just wrapped up like our first week doing the show. Yes, it was just announced last week that John Dickerson is a new co-host of CBS This Morning. And so we thought, you know, other people put together fancy schmancy packages. We thought, let's just go live and find out who John Dickerson really is. So we're, also, there's, we're, I'm not that interesting, so they couldn't get enough material. <laughs> it was, it material. Was, this is called Let It Rip on Facebook In the Toyota live Green CBS room. This Morning. For people to know a little bit about you, John Dickerson, I'd like to start with this. Your middle name? Frederick. Favorite my color? Grandfather's name was Frederick. Frederick, John. But my Frederick mother Dickerson. spelled it wrong on my birth certificate. Was she <laughs> did, put a she? CH, Frederick? Uh -huh. uh, but it's CK, we think, but it's still up in the air. John Frederick Dickerson. What's it on your Social Security card? I don't think it, I don't know. I haven't looked oh. at my Social Security card for such a long time. Okay, good. All right. Mm, okay. Well, Favorite I, color? I think it's orange, but don't, but it, but I don't think that's really true. I don't, I think I'm pretty, I don't think I have a super favorite color. This is what I think. A lot of people wanted this job because they wanted the chance to anchor with Nora O'Donnell. And I would be there too. So we had a lot of gentlemen callers and suitors. So I would like to know. What is this, know, the 18th century? <laughs> yes, we had a lot of gentlemen yes. callers how big and suitors. Is, how big is your dowry? <laughs> no, it ain't that big. So the question is this. Why do you think that you were qualified to sit with Nora O'Donnell, Nora Morahan O'Donnell, and Gail Patrice King? Well, no one what is. What do you bring to the table? No one is qualified, <laughs> really. So it's only people who can re reach a rough approximation of qualifications. <laughs> and I think the first is self deprecation, is yes. the qualification, and humility. Um, no. I say I, all this to say, John, I'm really thrilled. I know Nora's too. I'm not going to speak for her, but we're very excited that you're with us at the table. So. No, we, no, we no. We no, frequently speak for each other, no, but it's okay. I no, we are very, very excited. Excited. But the thing that struck me about it is, I A, didn't see it coming, number one. We had done um, a show And in, B, we weren't December. consulted. But yeah. <laughs> we had done a show <laughs> in December where you were filling in. They said, no, 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 it's not an audition. It's not an audition. He's just filling in. And I think that week went so well that a lot of light bulbs went off for people. But I thought, he'll never want this job because he's enjoying Face the Nation. Was it a tough decision for you? It was a, well. It was a really tough decision because I loved Face the Nation. I love the people down there. Washington's my hometown. But I thought a lot about what we do down there, and then getting to do everything we came up here. And you know, you create a world that you're about to go into, full of like gumdrops and candy, and it's all going to be wonderful. And then reality kicks in. But this last week uh -huh. has been fantastic. The yeah. conversations, working with the two of you, both on and off the air, the choreography, the banter, the back and forth, the understanding and thinking about issues that. I wouldn't have gotten to in my old job. So um, it's the weird thing where you actually are exceeding expectations. That's good. When you already have high expectations, you don't move your family and to a whole new city and out of your last job unless your expectations are pretty high. And you've got teenagers and a wife, so there had to be a family discussion about this. There was a, a f family discussion. My wife was ready to move already. I mean, Yay, once I Dickerson. hung up Thank the, you. Yeah, once yeah. I hung up the phone, she's like, I'm on the Acela. <laughs> um, but the kids were a little uh, What are their ages? More Fifteen and almost fourteen. Okay, um, yeah. and they were. Uh, um, they, I'll, I should let them speak for themselves. Teenage kids, you don't want to speak for them. Mm -hmm. But um, they were a little bit cautious, but now they're ready to go. Oh, good. That's great. Good. We should say that we are monitoring um, some of your comments and questions, so send them in, and we will ask John whatever we want to know. In fact. Oh, the questions are already oh, coming. Oh, here we are. Hot That's off Brandon. the presses. Okay. Wait, Brandon, come in so people can see you that you're not just an arm. This is yeah. Brandon. <laughs> yes, yes, Brandon. Who is, taking, who is taking all of your questions. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, good. All right. Okay. If you weren't a journalist, what other profession would you work in? Oh. Wow, that's, that's a, a good question. question. So the, w the two qu two answers. One is the one I would want to work in and be good enough to work in, which would be a musician. And then what, what do you play? The what guitar. Do you, oh, okay. Yeah. Do you uh, sing too? No. I I do I do sing I sing not in front of other people mostly okay. but um, or I ha I have done that and the people survive but it's not it's um, I'd rather just play the guitar but I don't know I think I'd probably be a, a I'd probably be in academia, probably. That's where I was headed when I got out of school. Like a professor? I or, think, yes, that would be like a Or college president. English. Oh, I, no, professor. Professor, I okay. Professor. Can I just say, um, we had, I, I had a 75th birthday party for Bob Schieffer at our house, and John and his wife and his two kids came, and his son, and this was um, four years ago, 
his son sat down at my piano, my grand piano, and played beautifully. So that's, that's obviously a nice trait you've passed on to oh, your kids, is your musical nice. talent. Well, and he's now better than, I mean, far better. So what happens is we listen to music, and I'm like, okay, so what key is that in? And then he carries it, and I just kind of follow along after him. And we should say, you two have known each other for a very long time. So John Dickerson isn't new to you, and Nora isn't new to you. That's you two have you known each other. Call. Was it that? Yeah, yeah, so probably since I was 23, 20 years ago, yeah. Yeah, when we were first Do starting the math. out in Washington. <laughs> Do the math, and my birthday is next Tuesday, January 23rd. Is it really? Oh, you and my daughter are very close yeah. in birthdays. Yes. Yeah, you'll have to have a I'm an Aquarius. Gail's a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. When's your I'm birthday? Cancer, July. July, July 6th. Okay. Yeah. Right after but, the nation's birthday. I think we should also talk about your mom, Nancy Dickerson, who was a, a legend in this business. I, I, I think there's something to me that feels like a full circle moment, only in that her picture has been on the set from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we put mementos of things that represent uh, a force for good in this business or something that we feel are iconic. And your mom has been on our bookshelf since the very beginning of this show. What do you think she would say about you being in this job? Well, you know, we, we talked about this on the first a week ago today, and I, I do think we can talk sure. about it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just <laughs> wanted to. I, terrified of repeating myself. That's okay. Um, I think the very first thing would be. I mean, you know, she spent eight years trying to get on air, and they kept saying no. Women and men in the audience won't take authority from women. Wow. So I, I, it's absolutely the case. She would be thrilled and would have been thrilled at both of your careers and that I was joining the two of you. I think the other thing is that um, I think she would be have a little bit of amusement probably because really? we had a pretty rough relationship when I was a, in high school and then when I got out of college. And so to... Um, to see me now essentially following so closely in her uh, footsteps, she would probably have a, a wry little moment about that. Well, you Can said just... rough relationship. I'd like to know more, but I know we don't have that much time. But we had Ann Curry on today, and I thought it was interesting that you said during the break that your mom actually had to leave the business, was sort of forced out because of her age. Right. And I said to John, what was your mom's age? And you said... Uh, we, d we decided it was 47, 46, 47. At which point I started weeping uncontrollably. And I said, you don't have much time I just have a few years left. Yes. <laughs> but that wasn't CBS. It was a different no, network. Right. 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 Okay, can I read? Because Facebook yes. Live, I'm yes. looking at some of the, um, what is your favorite um, genre of music? One of the questions. Uh -huh. So uh, probably folk, roots rock, and classic rock. Okay, Jane asks, who will be the new anchor of Face the Nation? Ah. That's up to uh, people not in this room at the moment, so it's a great mystery. Who would you like to be the new anchor of Face the Nation? I'm not going to answer that question, Gail King. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you, but you do so have an just idea. So you know, just so you now witness, one, we have no inside voice, <laughs> yeah. and two, we ask tough questions of not only guests at the table, but one another. <laughs> right. No, it's I love him <laughs> saying I'm not going to answer that question, so he knows. Okay. We have ways of making you talk, John Dickerson. <laughs> yeah. What else, Nora, are people say? Um, Love oh, okay. oh, wait, Brandon has oh, a, Come on in, Brandon, so people can see you, okay. so you're not just a voice on the side. Hello. Uh, what is your biggest challenge interviewing politicians today? Ah, okay. You know, okay. that's a great question. The biggest challenge interviewing politicians Who asked that question? All right. Uh, um, I don't know the name Senator, of Senator. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, is the change in the... Essentially, a lack of shame. There used to be a penalty that politicians paid for saying something that was either untrue or something that was a total, that was a, what I, what is a response instead of an answer. So if I ask you what color is the sky and you say fast, you have responded, but you have not answered. Yeah. And the, that because with the norms that used to keep people in line, you would ask a question and they would answer it. Now they say something that's way over here and you have to spend all your time getting them back into the normal boundaries. And they know that and they use that to eat up the clock. And so trying to have an actual exchange <clears throat> of information and when you have somebody on who actually is anxious to respond with information to the query you've posed, it's, it's like a drink of water in the desert. I mean, But you have such a very uh, charming way when people don't answer a question of circling back. I always used to marvel when I would watch Face the Nation, um, watching you, when somebody wouldn't directly answer the question, you'd let them finish, but then you'd circle back. Because I find it frustrating when you ask a politician a question, they quite often have a talking point. Sure. And no matter what you ask them, they're sticking to that talking point. And your natural inclination is to kind of react strongly yes. and yeah. I think you know certainly for people who are on the other ideological side or people who are watching want really to come right at them and in some instances that's a necessary thing to do it's the right mm -hmm. thing to do in other cases there are a lot of people watching 
who aren't quite sure why you're so upset at yeah. them or they're confused. And so it does sometimes require to get to the good answer, you have to do that, but also just to get people along with you, you have to be a tiny bit more patient than some people would like. Nancy Price, you're the next questionnaire on CBS This Morning Facebook Live. Nancy asks, do you want to do correspondent work now? And if so, will it be with a new perspective? Well, it's definitely the the show has given me a new perspective. I yeah, sure, I, correspondent work. I mean, I don't all you know interviews in a sense are correspondent work, but um, we also have an amazing group of correspondents. It's fantastic. That's, That's another great thing about this job. You get That's to true. pitch to the correspondent. One day they're on this side of the world, the other they're on this side of the world, and the amazing work. So we have a, a pretty great group there. Well, I can't wait to see what happens. Dr. Yeah. Seuss ha has a book called Oh, the Places We Will Go, something like that. And I'm thinking that applies to us. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this I continued you said partnership. Dr. Sousa. I, no, was no, like, no. No. I said Dr. Sousa. I said Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I know. I went yeah. to college. <laughs> Let me predict. Up, up, and up. Uh, up, up, oh. up, up, yes. up, up yes. and up. Yes. Okay, that was fun. Yay. Should we do more of these Facebook Yay. Lives? Weigh in. Yeah. Yes. yes. Brandon says yes. More Facebook Lives. Good discussion. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank See you. On you. the show tomorrow.